Hey everybody, how you doing? Jason Abelson here with another edition of Boxcaster Live. Man, oh man, we got a great weekend of fights in store for you. I hope you guys had a good week and an ever even better weekend planned ahead. Of course, lots of fights to look forward to this weekend. Topped by, of course, the David Hay, Tony Bellew rematch going down tomorrow night at the O2 Arena in London, England. I'm looking forward to that fight. I got to tell you, I've been flip-flopping on this one. Real flip-flopping. Lawrence, how you doing, buddy? Our visitor speaking a language I do not understand. It looks Korean. How are you? Hope your day is well. Nice to see some peace and stability on the peninsula there. If you're not Korean, I apologize. Everything's good here. But I've been flip-flopping on Hey Bell You. Because I'm not normally a guy, you know, if something happens once, it's not by accident. That being David Hay breaking down, clearly on the wrong side of a career peak. But, you know, there are instances where perhaps one event may have been a bit of an outlier. And I think there are circumstances that presented itself in the first fight that I don't think people realize going in, and I think the end result, which was indicative of these circumstances, kind of surprised everybody. There are a lot of whispers pre-fight last March that David Hay was not 100%. That Hay had some lingering pre-fight issues that affected his training camp. He looked a little heavy on fight night. He seems a lot fitter now. He seems a lot more focused. And let's face it. When he is at his best, he should beat Tony Bellew. And I picked Bellew to win the first fight. I did. And I wasn't just trying to be contrary to public opinion because everyone thought it would be hey and hey easily and brutally. I just thought we maybe had seen the best of Hay and we had a strong, motivated Bellew coming up. And now I'm thinking the motivation seems to be on David Hay's side. Mario Yamasaki, how you doing, buddy? So I think I'm going to go, when push comes to shove, I'm going to go with David Hay. But you can get my detailed rationale. On our bold prediction segment, which we'll be putting up later on in the day. Mario Yamasaki saying he's got the shovel and casket ready for Martirosian. Yeah, I think so. Of course, Martirosian taking on Triple G tomorrow night at the StubHub Center in Carson, California. The big news about that fight isn't so much the actual showdown between Martirosian and Golovkin. It's the news this week that Saul Canelo Alvarez hasn't even enrolled in VADA. And that, as per the regulations, the stipulations of his suspension with the Nevada State Athletic Commission, he doesn't have to enroll in any type of controlled drug testing up until a month before his scheduled return. Not even a month before his suspension ends, but a month before his scheduled return. Sean G saying that Vanis's wife, I imagine, are you saying that unemployed Mario Yamasaki is really Vanis Martirosian's wife? And she's got, what about the insurance policy? Did you get that signed before too? I hope so, Vanis's wife. You could be cashing in large. Of course, what kind of stupid insurance policy would underrate a fighter about to step in with Gennady Golovkin? Like a fighter who hasn't fought at middleweight before and had his best years at 154 five, six years ago. Ain't no insurance company around would underwrite that policy. (laughs) 68's dark voyeurism. Canelo's innocent. Of what? Murder? Perhaps. What are the charges we're levying against him? 
PED use? Guilty! Sorry! But to make matters worse, wait, the worst thing about this is, you know, if you're going to find a guy guilty of a serious crime, you have to give him a serious punishment. Not this crap that the Nevada State Athletic Commission doled out. So a six-month suspension, and you can go your entire six months without being required to register with an anti-doping agency for any type of testing? What kind of hell is that? And Golovkin's hearing this, and he goes, I don't know if I want to fight this guy next. Well, I don't blame you. Not only did he look guilty, he's acting guilty. Leroy Vons, how you doing, buddy? I mean, anyone who ever wanted to question the notion that Canelo was guilty would probably want to see some kind of remorse and contrition on his part, that this mistake will never happen again. And to prove that I'm a clean fighter, I'm going to enroll right away and try to clear my name. Hell no. Triple G ran from Canelo. When? When? When they fought? When Canelo tested positive for clenbuterol twice? Unless you're trolling me, 68's dark voyeurism. And I I have a feeling I might be trolled. I know a good trolling when I see one. You crazy. How can a beautiful benefit, fit, benefit you five, five, five mouths, supposed to be months, before the fight? It shouldn't be on clenbuterol anyway. You shouldn't be using it to help you train in preparation for a fight. You shouldn't be on clenbuterol. Hope Hay beats Bellew. Paul Taylor, how you doing, buddy? Welcome aboard, my friend. It's an intriguing fight, this Hay Bellew thing. Because I think, I'm not going to say that the, the scripts have been flipped. I mean, clearly still, David Hay is still the older fighter. David Hay still has the physical questions that need to be answered about his ability to go through 12 rounds and still remain healthy without getting punched? Like, can he actually go through 12 rounds of boxing movement, never mind surviving boxing contact? contact. Nicholas Santa, how you doing? Good evening. He ate meat. Dark voyeurism. Okay. So clearly, so he's allowed to eat tainted meat, but nobody else is. And we might have had Vanis Martirogian's wife on before, but clearly we got Canelo Alvarez's wife on now. 60s dark voyeurism. Got a lot of a lot of skin in the game here. I mean, yeah, Triple G didn't stop going. I, was, I had Triple G winning the first fight. If you wanted, if you wanted really wanted Canelo Alvarez to win badly, there were enough rounds to give him a draw. Yet one judge gave him 10 rounds to two. Thankfully, she won't be judging. Well, she could be judging fights in the future. She is judging fights again. Thank you, Nevada State Athletic Commission. You guys really come down hard on fighters. Like They are looking so weak This notion that Alvarez doesn't have to test himself at all during his suspension is crazy because it's a six-month suspension, and according to the Nevada State Athletic Commission, he doesn't have to test again until one month prior to his ring return. So if he's back in seven months, this six months, he could be popping all the clenbuterol he wants or eating all the carne asada he wants. Jack McCormick, how you doing, Jack? Change your mind twice. Thought, hey, then Bellew, and after the public workout, 
He looked fast using his jab in that clip. Malik Scott was thinking him again as well. Malik Scott knows a thing or two. Malik Scott not only has stunk up many a good fight, but he's been in there. He's he's a professional boxing veteran. He knows how to survive in the ring. Unless he's facing Deontay Wilder, then, you know, good night within 15 seconds. Sixties dark voyeurism. Innocent till proven what? He was proven guilty. If you... Okay, I'm getting lured into here. And we got other fights to talk about. But if you are taking a drug test and you are found to have that drug that they're testing for in your system, you have been found guilty. That is what a drug test is. It's not about mitigating circumstances. It's do you have this drug that we're testing for in your system? And then they don't go ask for testimony why it was there and blah, blah, blah. Are you clean? Are you dirty? Not are you clean most of the time, but went to a Taco Bell, although Taco Bell's meat is not contaminated by clenbuterol. No one here at Boxcaster thinks for a second that Taco Bell or any brands associated with Taco Bell use meat contaminated with clenbuterol. Ben Franklin, I have 7-5 Canelo as well. For the rematch or for the first fight? Wow. All right, listen, you could have had it 7-5. Did you have it 10-2? I was there for the fight. Of course, I was so high on the rafters that I ended up looking at the fight on the scoreboard, which was essentially the HBO pay-per-view telecast. So I was no better. I had no better vantage point than anyone else, even though I was in the building. But I thought Golovkin did enough. I think he did more than enough. Anyway, let's talk about the other fights this weekend. Yes, there's Mart Erosion, Triple G, or Triple G Mart Erosion, let's get real. Ain't no upset happening there. And on the undercard, some history in the making. HBO, for the first time in 45 years, putting on a female fight on regular HBO. Not HBO pay-per-view. Christy Martin used to fight on there a long time ago, but actually on regular HBO. Cecilia, the first woman of boxing, Brackis, going up against uh, Layla Kawai. I've ever written down here. Oh, no, Callie Reese, Layla Kawai. How's my handwriting? That's a stupid fight to have. Brack is going to go through her like shit through a goose. I mean, that's... What are you showcasing? Are you showcasing Brackus? And then when are you going to have her on again? Ever? Or do they ha- not have anyone else on the undercard deemed worthy of HBO, so they're going to put on Cecilia Brackus? So I'm not sure. Is this a commitment to women's boxing? A commitment to Cecilia Brackus or a commitment to rounding out a uh, HBO card? Other big news today popped up. Paul Butler, Manny Rodriguez, a fight that looked really good on paper for the IBF Bantamweight Championship. Eh, mm, kind of ruined. Butler, going the squat, Scott Quigg route of making weight, decided to weigh in at 121.3. And then unlike Scott Quigg, he decided to not even bother reweighing. So Paul Butler joins the ranks of, of uh, prideless scrupulous cheaters. I mean, that's that's weak, Paul Butler. I mean, Rodriguez is going to beat your ass anyway, so I guess you have to give yourself an edge. But that's weak. That is so weak. Blowing your weight by three pounds, more than three pounds, when you're fighting at 118, it's cheating. And you're not even reweighing. I hope you get knocked out. I hope he does a tete on you. He won't. He's not tete. But he's a damn good prospect. I mean, Rodriguez is the blast. He's unbelievable, the blast. That's a good one. Instead of the bomb, he's the blast. Get back to some of these comments. 60s voyeurism. Cecilia is so effing hot. I don't even like Latina women. Well, I'm going to agree with half of you there, dark voyeurism. Cecilia Brackus is effing hot. She isn't Latina at all. She's Dutch. 
Bracus is about the least sounding Hispanic name I've ever heard in my life. You know why? Because it's not a Hispanic name. Jack McCormick. Who's this Money Powell, the fourth guy? Jason, is he a prospect? Powell, the fourth. Uh, not sure. Not sure, Jack. You got me there. Stumped. Idiot stumped here. Don't know. Don't know who Powell is. But I'll give credit to Eddie Hearn. He tried to put together a really good card. Undone by another one of his lower weight fighters blowing the weight for a really attractive fight. Of course, Scott Quigg did that against Oscar Valdez. And now this. She's Norwegian and from Colombia. Okay, she's Norwegian. Is she from Colombia? Then dark voyeurism, I apologize. Stumped again. You guys are outing me as like some kind of know-nothing moron. But I agree with you. She's hot. We're on board there, right, buddy? Totally hot. And can fight. Although nine knockouts. Nine knockouts. She's good. But is she better than... Because I've seen some of the opposition she's had. Not sure what's going on there. The odds for Hey Bellew. Haven't checked it up. Unemployed Yamasaki. I think Hay is the favorite going in again. It could be. It's going to be close to 50-50. Boxing hero. I don't think Triple G wants the rematch. He wants the rematch against a clean fighter. Not a confirmed cheater who's being told he doesn't have to retest up until a month before the rematch. And Jax Pax. No one gives an S about women's boxing. Disagree. You don't give an ass about women's boxing. I think it's great. Wouldn't it be great? Guys, wouldn't it be great if you said, honey, I'm watching the fights. And she goes, oh, who's fighting? And she goes, oh, Cecilia Brack. And she goes, I've heard of her. I'm really interested. Could I watch the fights instead of nagging you for half the week about how we have to go visit my mother? But how, why are you always going to the fights? Wouldn't it be great? If she wants to watch with you, you know, she's going to want to watch with you if she has someone she's looking at she could identify with. I want more women's boxing. Besides, guys, you may not give an ass about it. How many bad female fights have you seen? By bad, I mean boring. Not one. I have not, maybe one or two, but I've seen a lot. And invariably, when they're on a the card, they're the best fight on the undercard, if not the entire card. Uh, Jax Pax, coming up with some enlightened thought here. The woman places in the kitchen, not the ring. Oh, Lordy Lord. Let your daughters know that. Good job, buddy. Nicholas Santa. I like the smiling faces, buddy. But I really disappointed Paul Butler in blowing off that weight like that. Boo. I mean, that's lame. Lame. You know, the big fight, there's one fight I got to talk about. Boxing hero. Cheater is a person who has an unfair advantage. He's saying Canelo's had an unfair advantage at any time. It's possible he just tested positive for a performance-enhancing drug. Yes. I'm saying it's possible he might have. Let's get back to reality, gentlemen, and not some self-induced fantasy that some of you are living in regarding Canelo and his innocence of PED use despite the fact he just tested positive in two tests for PEDs and was suspended for and was suspended for it, too. Somehow that makes him innocent. The world's a strange place. A fight I'm really looking forward to. I'm looking forward to a lot this weekend. The fight that is flying under the radar. Tonight at the StubHub Center. Busy day if you're in Carson, California. If you're in Southern California, just rent a hotel right by the StubHub Center. Got tonight's fight. 
and Triple G Marta Rosen tomorrow. But the fight that I want to see is tonight. Ryan Garcia. Easily one of, if not the hottest. Hottest by I mean there's more buzz around. I'm not like, oh, he's so cute. Although women and bo- women will be tuning in to watch King Rye. He's going up against Jason Velez. Jason Velez is no scrub. Jason Velez is actually the perfect measuring stick for Ryan Garcia at this point of his career. And I know Velez had lost four in a row. Yeah, but he lost to some decent guys there, including Jojo Diaz, who started off that four-fight losing streak. But since then, he's battled back. He beat a decent fighter in Salvador Sanchez Jr. And stopped a, yes, past his prime, Wanma, but still stopped him in the 12th round. He's coming off that victory for this Ryan Garcia fight. In the past, he's beaten other good fighters too. Alberto Mercado. And he's been in with some good guys. And you know what? Up until the Diaz fight, he was considered a top guy, a top prospect. And he hit his his speed bump, but he's bounced back. I'm telling you, and he's never been stopped. I'm telling you, this is a tough fight for Ryan Garcia. Watch it. Because we'll, we will see for sure how good he is. I think he could be really good. But we'll know after beating Velez. Not the collection of stiffs that we've seen Garcia fight in the past. And he's looked spectacular against them. But those guys were heavy bags. Actually, very light heavy bags. But they were just meat. 60s dark. Garcia blasts him out in six. Could be. If, it, if he does then I think Garcia is everything that they say he is and everything he says he is. And, of course, on the undercard of that, Gary Spike O'Sullivan going up against Abreu. First name is Berlin. Berlin Abreu. Abreu guy, 13-1, 14-1, 11 KOs. You think, wow, that's pretty good going in. 14, that's going to be a little test for... For Gary, this could be a hiccup. Except you scratch a little bit. You go into the surface. You see who Abreu's fought. Twelve of those wins have come against opponents with a combined record of 15, 226, and 10. Whereas Gary Spike O'Sullivan fights pretty much the best, loses only to the likes of Billy Joe Saunders and Chris Eubank. And he gave Saunders a hell of a fight. And he did really well against Eubank. Yeah, this is uh, Gary Spike O'Sullivan for sure. Easy. Jack's Packs this weekend, right? Ryan Garcia will sell more tickets than Triple G. Perhaps. Although they've been crowing that the uh, Triple G fight is going to set a StubHub attendance record. Not calling them liars. But I haven't investigated that to be a fact. If that's so, I don't think King Rai will top what Triple G sells as far as tickets. But you're not going to have a small crowd at StubHub to see Ryan Garcia fight. Guys going back and forth about these hair tests. Now, I'm telling you guys, I, I don't get the... Like, what else do people need? Listen, I'm a fan of certain guys. But if they test positive, I don't question the tester or the test. I question the athlete. I don't get that you guys just can't get out of your own asses. Why you think you've got so much skin in the game? Why you would take it so personally that your guy got caught cheating? You should take it personally. You should be mad at the athlete. Not at the people who, who one, test him, or two, are affected by the, the fact that he's now a confirmed dirty fighter. And we're seeing it. We're seeing it all over the place, too. This whole Wilder Joshua thing. 
You've got Wilders fans. And by the way, I'm one of them. I'm a fan of his. I think he actually beats AJ. Sorry, UK fans. I know I said that. Don't go clicking off just yet. This guy's a right tosser. Did you hear what he said? Yes, I think when they fight, I think Wilder knocks out AJ. Great fight. I could be wrong. That's what I think going in. That doesn't mean, though, I'm going to echo what all these Wilder fans, and, you know, it's more than being a Wilder fan. It's all these PBC guys who somehow feel that they're profiting at all by Al Heyman, who are saying that Eddie has no business questioning Al Heyman and whether he's got $50 million to actually guarantee for the fight. Like, they're taking it personally. American Patriot, 776. How you doing, buddy? I got I got hay. Wants to know, hey, Bellew, who wins? I got hay. I'm liking the vibe I'm feeling from David Hay in the buildup to this. Plus, I have to tell you, what has been flipped in the scripts is that Bellew's being a bit of a bell end for this fight. He's being he's being the douche that Hay was. In the previous fight. Although Bellew was kind of poking him and poking him and poking him. And then Hay got all pissy and started saying, oh, you better hug your kid at night. You're not going to see him the next day. Or, you know, they're going to be spoon feeding you pea soup for eight months while you're recuperating in a hospital bed. Lying on bedpans and stuff like that. But now, I mean, Hay's the one that's calm, cool, and collected. And Bellew's being a bit of a douche. Not a bit of a douche. He's being a heaping side of douche. Back to the comments. Doo -doo -doo. Why would Spike pass on a chance for three titles against Golovkin? Good question, foul pull boxing. I think... It was because they basically had an agreement on one purse, and then after everything changed from the fight happening in Vegas to the fight being moved to StubHub and budgets being slashed, they didn't like the fact that the offer that he it was everything was revised to was a scant fraction of the number that was originally discussed. And I think he decided that he's going to bide his time for something else. that the risk of fighting Golovkin on short notice for a reduced purse didn't mm, it didn't jibe with the actual award with the purse that he was given. So I, I get why he didn't do it, but I understand people thinking, why didn't you? Jack McCormick, Spike O'Sullivan, a good fighter, buzzed Eubank a few times, but don't see him beating any of the champs or contenders in a strong division, but too strong. Oh, you're saying it's too strong a division. Oh, uh, it's a strong division. I think he deserves a crack against one of those guys, though. I think he deserves a crack against a Charlo. I think he des deserves a crack against Danny Jacobs. Deserves a crack against Lemieux. And because he's with Golden Boy and because he showed well on HBO last time, and if he shows well against Berlin Abreu, and if Golovkin decides that he's going to go elsewhere because he doesn't want to face a guy who refuses to be tested even after he's tested positive for clenbuterol, for PEDs, then maybe he'll get a crack at, at Alvarez. Jack's Packs. Bellie is the most annoying asshole in boxing since Floyd Mayweather Jr. Well, I think he's more annoying than Floyd. But then at the same time, like Floyd, he has his charming moments where you're kind of like, oh, okay, I get it. Boxing hero. It is so far-fetched that Canelo could have ate contaminated meat in Mexico. Is it so far-fetched? Instead of accusing him of being a cheater, you should find out if he had an unfair advantage. That's what a cheater is. 
No. Okay, maybe I shouldn't call him a cheater, but what I should have called him is a fighter who had PEDs in his system. It does not matter how they get there. What matters is that it's there and that you do something to make sure it doesn't happen again and that you're not allowed to be in a position after testing positive where you can get into a ring. That's what I think. I don't think that's crazy. Is it far-fetched that he contaminated me to Mexico? It's not. It's also not far-fetched he shouldn't be, that he he should have put himself in a position that contaminated Mexican meat was an issue for him because it's out there that clenbuterol is part of the Mexican food system. Farmers are allowed to uh, to use clenbuterol in breeding beef that has a leaner element to it. And it is there. We've seen it in the past. However, by acknowledging that, by, no, by, by if you're a, uh, an authority in boxing or an authority at all in uh, reducing PEDs in sport, you can't use that for a reason to not suspend somebody who's tested positive because then you're saying that Mexicans are allowed trace elements in their system and anyone else isn't. And that, of course is the epitome of horseshit. You can't do that. You are either contaminated with clenbuterol or you are not. That is it. It's not a matter of how it got there. He then needs to be suspended because he did not take the care. He could afford to bring in hand-reared cattle from Scandinavia on a daily basis A daily basis, it'd be hand reared and bottle fed with the purest ingredients in the world, without a trace of anything in it, the most organic meat ever. We decided no. He's going to go down to the local corner, the local corner butcher in whatever villa he was in, and grab whatever meat was hanging down there and make carne asatas or whatever he made. Valpool Boxing. The risk of fighting for three belts, Spike's a joke. Okay, well, it's official. Spike, you're a joke. All the great work you've done in your career, the good fights you've given us, the promise you showed in the Antoine Douglas fight means nothing. You're a joke. Because you didn't take... You, you didn't take a purse that was... exponentially smaller than what you were originally offered to go fight one of the most feared fighters in boxing. Hold on, someone's knocking at my door. I think I'm being told that I should end things off here. I'm going to go for another two minutes. You hear me? I'm going for another two minutes. All right. Don Jays. Floyd has no charming moment. Only, retar only retarded moment. I don't know. I've got... i got a soft spot for Floyd. I don't know why I, I do. Listen. It's probably not easy walking in that man's shoes. And I'm not going to judge a guy. Is he a douche when it comes to women? Yes. Absolutely. Floyd and women just do not mix. He's got a weird view on them. And uh, I, I can't jive with that. Now, if you take that off, it's not like that's like a small little incision and flip, it's not there anymore. It's a big deal. That aside, given all the mouths this guy has to feed, I think he does it generously. I think he does it uh, with kindness. I think he is a terrific promoter who's giving fighters a hell of an opportunity, despite the fact that some of them aren't very good. He still keeps them on and is still loyal to them. And I think he does a, he does a good job with his gym. He does a good job with his fighters. I think he acts professionally with the media. I think he, generally speaking, is a classier act than he's given credit for. What I take away from the Danny Jacobs performance last week, I don't play Mario Yamasaki. It was a great fight. And Selecki's a 
beast. Let's see Spike O'Sullivan against Selecki. Oh, I'm in for that, please. Right here. Mafioso the Don. If Antoine Douglas had beaten Spike, would he be on his bandwagon? No, because he would have lost to Antoine Douglas. But he stopped Antoine Douglas on HBO. So I'm on his bandwagon. That's a simple question. Next. I mean, a guy gets up, makes the most of his opportunity, looks very good in stopping a guy who, yes, had been stopped by Kurt Sietze, the midget, as uh, who called him? Foulpole Boxing called him. A midget. Call, call Kurt Sietze a midget to his face. Of course, he'd be looking down if you have to do it, but I dare you. That midget would ruin you. Midget. Midget. I mean, they're jumping on the bandwagon. Why? Because his only career losses have been in competitive fights with Chris Eubank Jr. and Billy Joe Saunders. That every fight he's in, he's entertaining. He's personable. He's always treated me well. Yes, I'm on the bandwagon. Because... He made his North American debut, his HBO debut, in impressive fashion. So, yes, I'm on the bandwagon. I don't play Mario Yamasaki for a person that amount of money. Floyd Mead seems to be pretty grounded. I agree with you. There is a certain matter, matter with Floyd that he kind of gets it. I don't think he takes his money for granted. I think he enjoys the hell out of his money. Again, when it comes to the women thing, you know, he needs to be checked. I mean, how many strip clubs can he open up? But when it comes to being grounded, seem to be a good dad, seem to treat the people around you with respect and generosity, I think you got to tick those boxes when it comes to Floyd. Jack's packs, Floyd's a douchebag, period. Who needs yes men to feel better about his insecurity? Okay, fine. So don't go hanging around with them. Anyway, guys, someone's knocking on my door as if we're being raided by the feds. I don't think we are, but for some reason, I've gone over my half-hour allotment by around eight minutes because we started a little late. I apologize to those out there. The fire department's trying to break in. Can I do tomorrow live streaming of Triple G versus Vanis fight? Nicholas Santa? I don't believe I can. I can't say yes and not do it. I'd rather say no and then do it. But then don't take that as a yes, I'm going to do it. Let's go with this, Nicholas. No, I'm not going to do it. I can't do it. We'll look into doing it later. I gave you a very parental, we'll look into it later, dear, approach to that. I like the idea. Foul pole boxing, I'm misinformed. Vanis beat Spike. Who's misinformed? Vanis Martirosian beat Spike. You're saying that as if it's fact. And I'm misinformed. All right, listen. Disagree with me? You're allowed to disagree. I, that's what I love about this channel. I'm saying about my channel. My channel. Our channel here. Every opinion is welcome. And it, I could disagree with it. But I'm not going to reduce you for thinking that. Because you know what? I'm wrong a lot of the time. I'm going to say 36% of the time I'm wrong. Come on, bro, why not? Because. That's why. Um, we'll look into something later. But we're not going to do a live stream. One, because I've got a wife and kids. And I may not be watching the fight live. And I may not be hooking up. I may not be at a place where I can do it live. Let's just say no. Spike way more better than Vanis. Vanis not even in the middle of ways. I know. I know. But for some reason, people hate Spike. I don't get it. Hey, Timmy, how you doing, buddy? Pot, 36%. Well, I listen. Yeah, 36%. Guys, tune in later this week. Later this week. Later today. This week's almost over. 
I'll be uh, putting up our bold predictions. And guys, like and subscribe. I haven't even mentioned that. If you're watching this now, click that like button. Even if you dislike it. Just because you spent time with me. Press that like button. I think I'm good company. Tell the world what we're doing. And if you're watching, you better, you better have subscribed. Make sure you have. And don't go clicking that like button twice or four times. Click it once. Click it three times or five times. Click it twice as if you never clicked it at all. Same with four times and six times and eight times. It's all about Jamie Cox, John Ryder. Best fight this weekend. It's a, it's a good fight. That's a good fight. I only had so many more to talk about. And boo your man, Paul Butler. Not that it's your man, Timmy Turner, but that was BS. Over three pounds heavy. Anyway, guys, Spike lost to Eubank, who sucks. <laughs> yeah, I like, oh, my God. Listen, Eubank isn't the fighter that we all thought he would be, or a lot of people thought he would be. He's still a pretty good fighter. Extremely skilled. Guys, I got a split. People are grumbling about me outside. Not that I care, but I got to work with them. And don't sleep on tonight's fight. Ryan Garcia, Jason Velez. If Garcia wins big, he is the real deal. I think Velez is a terrific measuring stick right now. But guys, enjoy the fights. Check out Bold Predictions later on today. And keep in touch and tell the world about what we do here. We are indeed the best source of news, information, predictions, comments, discussions on the Sweet Science anywhere on YouTube or the web right here. Foxcaster, spread the word and keep them up. Have a great weekend. I'll see you guys Monday.